In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our series of reflections, we've been focusing mostly on the readings for the ordinary form Mass, but I was struck by the reading from the fifth Sunday after Passover, uh, the fifth Sunday of Easter, uh, in the extraordinary form. So today, our reflection is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I assure you, whatever you ask the Father, he will give you in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be complete. I have said all this to you in figures of speech. An hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly about the Father. On that day you will ask in my name, and this does not mean that I shall have to petition the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, since you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father, and I have come into the world. Now I am leaving the world, and I am going to the Father. Why, at last, his disciples exclaimed, are you talking plainly without any figure of speech? Now we know that you know everything. No need for anybody to ask you questions. Because of this, we believe that you came forth from God. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The epistle for this Sunday's Mass from the Blessed Apostle James starts, Beloved, Act on this revelation. If you only listen to it, you are fooling yourselves. For a man who listens to divine revelation but does not put it into practice is like a man who looks into a mirror at the face he was born with. He looks at himself, then off he goes and promptly forgets how he appeared. In the Gospel, our Lord says, Ask anything in my name, and it will be given to you. Not because he will ask the Father for us, but because the Father hears us and loves us. The faith that we have been given is that who we are, what we look like, comes from the Father. And we can't just hear this reality Behold, you are wonderfully made. We must live that reality. That the way of life that is truly ours is always in reference to God. And to understand who we truly are, we must be always seeking his will. People hear the gospel today and they say, Well, I asked for this or that from the Father, and I didn't get it. I remember as a child I asked for a pony, and I didn't get it. Well, I did. I got it for my First Holy Communion, but it was a rental, and then it had to go home. And that's not what I asked for. I wanted a pony. Of course, we had a small yard. We didn't have a farm. We didn't have a barn. We had no place to put a pony. And yet I asked the Father for it. Why didn't he give it to me? And maybe this seems like a flippant sort of example. Maybe there are good things that we ask for. Father, I'd like a job, especially if I've lost my job in the midst of this pandemic. Father, I want someone to be healed. I want someone to be safe. I don't want my child to go off to war. I don't want my children to make wrong decisions. I want my wife, my husband to love me more. I want my children to be more obedient to me. These are all good things that we ask of the Father. And so often the answer is no. We don't understand that in light of the gospel. Ask for whatever you want and the Father will give it to you. But see, therein is the mistake we make. I omitted something. Did you catch it? Our Lord says, ask whatever you want in my name. In my name. Those three words are essential to understanding the nature of Christian prayer. What is the most exalted name? 
of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Is it not the Son of God? But if he's a son, he's only a son in reference to the Father. And the Son does the will of the Father, not the other way around. When we go to our Father as little children, we say, Daddy, I'd really like to have jelly beans for breakfast this morning. Our Father might say no, not because he doesn't love us, but because he knows how we are made. Biologically, he knows that jelly beans might not be the most healthy thing to eat. He knows about the virtues that we need to develop and the danger of vice. He wants what's truly good for us, even if we don't see it ourselves. That's why St. James writes, be doers of the word. When we say, Father, we are implicitly saying, you have authority over me. You have knowledge of what is good for me. My identity comes from you. If we call God our Father and then we ask something of the Father, but with the attitude, the spirit of the world, the spirit of idolatry, you better do it for me. Or maybe a spirit of bartering. If you do this, I'll do that for you. We're not asking things in his name. We're not asking things in the name of the Son as sons and daughters in the Son. And God who loves us, he will answer us. He will answer our requests. But we won't be open to hearing those answers because we've asked in the wrong way. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God is all-good. Be doers of the word and not just hearers. We've heard those three things many times in our lives as Christians. And yet, so oftentimes, we don't act in accord with that truth. We act as if God was an actor on the world stage, maybe someone we have to contend with, but not the source of all goodness, not the source of our identity, not the one who's all-knowing and desires what is good for us and is the only source of goodness, the way, the truth, and the life. And so we're not doers of the word. We're hearers. Maybe we're parrots. But we don't allow the word into our heart. That's what our Lord is warning us about. At the end of the gospel today, the apostles say, finally you're revealing yourself to us. Why does the Lord seem absent so often? Why does he seem like he stays aloof? He speaks to us in parables. Isn't it because he wants to give us space? He wants to give us space to be doers of the word. He wants to give us space to love him and to see if we really trust him. We call him father. We've received the spirit of adoption. This weekend we confirmed three of our candidates who are newly entering into the church. They were confirmed in that spirit of adoption and given a mission to be doers of the world, to go forth to all the ends of the earth, preaching the good news and baptizing the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, helping other people to be conformed to the Lord. Will they do that simply by speaking the word and by hearing the word? Or will they do that by their way of life? And so ask whatever you need from the Father in his name. Being doers of the word. Being sons in the Son. Trusting that God's plan is better than ours. That God's ways are not our ways. And that all things are possible for God. This may seem cliche, but this is exactly the struggle of life. This is exactly the stuff of holiness. Struggling with our will. In the Garden of Gethsemane with our Lord. 
who shows us that sometimes our human will is opposed to the will of the Father. Sometimes we think we know better. And you know, in the wisdom of the world, we're absolutely right. In the wisdom of the world, the cross is not a good thing. And yet, Christ shows us in saying, if it's possible, let this chalice pass by me, but not my will, but thy will be done. In going to the cross, in dying on the cross, in resting three days in the sepulcher, in rising from the dead during this Easter season, that's what we celebrate. That if we don't do our will, if we truly ask in his name and respond as sons and daughters in the Son, then even the greatest desolation will result in life and blessing, and peace, and hope. Lord Jesus, we desire to receive you into our hearts. We cannot receive you now in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Help us to receive you spiritually into our hearts, so that we might be doers of the word in our everyday life so that we might trust in you, so that we might ask the Father all things in your name and cooperate with his loving plan. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.